Simpson switches occur when a horse is stretched out from a sprint to a route. Many times a trainer will use a series of short races to sharpen up a horse for a distance event or perhaps for conditioning purposes to further a horse's fitness. Some even use sprint races for schooling purposes to help the horse gain experience prior to an attempt around two turns. When trying to determine whether or not a horse will improve while stretching out from a sprint to a route, you should first examine the horse's past performance chart to determine whether he has ever routed successfully in the past. If so, the sprint to route angle can be considered in a very positive light. But in the case where a horse has never been tried around two turns, here are some things to consider. First, notice the horse's running style. It's a fallacy that a horse that rallies from out of the clouds in his sprint races will automatically improve when given more distance. Old Revel is a high-class stakes performer, but he is the epitome of a late-running sprinter. He's blessed with a short quarter-of-a-mile burst, but in his one try around two turns, he flattened out badly. Back sprinting in his next start, the Thanksgiving Day handicap at fairgrounds, Old Revel roared from behind to win in the final stride. While late running sprinters make for poor gambles on the stretch out, dyed in the wool front running sprinters don't often fare much better. Most of the time, severe rating tactics are employed as the jockey tries to get his mount to slow down early and dole out his sprinter's speed in an effort to conserve energy. Usually the opposite happens. The horse spends so much energy fighting his rider, he'll eventually run out of gas when the real racing begins. The type of horse that fares best on the stretch out is the one who has an even, steady running style in his sprint efforts, capable of staying within range of the leader while not dropping too far back in the early stages. Even if the horse doesn't make up gobbles of ground through the stretch, as long as he maintains his position or even passes a few rivals in the final quarter of a mile, he has a license to enjoy more ground. There are a few other angles to look for. Does the trainer do well with the sprint to route maneuver? Do the existence of longer, slower workouts tip the trainer's intentions? Pedigree obviously can be important too. Horses that are bred to run a distance of ground usually will, while horses with sprint pedigrees are always suspect until they prove they can outrun their bloodline. Many handicappers assume that whatever a horse might have done in a race off an extended layoff, he likely will do even better in his second start off the layoff, the thinking being that he probably wasn't quite fit for his return race, and he should be able to improve on his performance with a race under his belt. Well, it's a nice theory, but it doesn't always work, and here's why. Horses aren't made of steel, but rather flesh and blood. You probably know that. What you may not realize is that their conditioning can fluctuate from race to race, depending upon how much physical energy they were forced to expend in their most recent outing. What may look like a very fast, superior performance may have taken its toll on the horse's fitness. And when a horse experiences a hard race, even in victory, he often needs quite a bit of time off to recover from the ordeal. This is what is known as the bounce theory. A horse is said to have bounced when he regresses unexpectedly after an all-out physically taxing effort. Most horsemen are aware of the phenomenon, but it's not uncommon for a trainer to think he's given his horse enough time to get over a tough race, but still be disappointed when his horse bounces anyway. Handicappers who can't anticipate a bounce might be able to save their wagering dollars from being wasted on a horse whose physical condition has been chipped away by a recent grueling, gut-wrenching effort. Here's what you should know about the bounce theory. It tends to have a greater effect on cheaper horses and those with physical problems, especially horses who are returning off a of vacation and are forced to lay their bodies down in their comeback race. They almost always regress in their next start. Dirt horses tend to bounce more often than grass runners, simply because dirt horses are usually subjected to a faster, more constant pace and must run harder. Fillies are more susceptible to a bounce than colts, and sprinters are more likely to feel the effects of a taxing effort than a router, again, primarily because of pace considerations. If you suspect a horse is going to be a bounce candidate today, even though all other factors make him a major contender, check his past performance chart to see how he's performed off hard races in the past. If a horse has shown the ability to string good ones back to back consistently throughout his career, it means he probably has the constitution to avoid the dreaded bounce. No matter how much time you spend reading the daily racing form, you will never maximize your skill as a handicapper until you master the art of watching a horse race. Think of it in these terms. Studying the daily racing form chart is like determining the merits of a movie simply by reading the reviews. 
You should learn to trust your own opinion, not somebody else's. Use the charts for reference, but watch the races with your own eyes, and maybe you'll see things in a different light. Let's start with the start. In virtually every race, there is always some degree of bumping that takes place soon after the horses leave the gate. And it stands to reason that any kind of jostling and pinballing would have a much greater impact in a sprint race than in a distance event. Furthermore, a rough start figures to compromise a go-to-the-front speed horse much more than it would a runner who tends to fall back anyway. A speed horse taken out of his game plan after even a minor collision at the break very likely deserves a legitimate excuse for a substandard performance. Whenever a speed horse overcomes a rugged start to run well or even win, the handicapper needs to take notice. Are you talking to me? A noted speed horse breaking from the rail gave himself much to do after he failed to leave cleanly in this rather competitive entry-level allowance race at Santa Anita. Putting himself behind the eight ball right from the start, Are You Talking to Me had to reach back for some reserve speed and energy to maintain his position along the rail, never getting a breather at any stage, but still finding more when the pressure was turned on in the stretch. This tough-as-nails gelding managed to draw clear in the final furlong to prove a convincing winner. As you can see, there was nothing soft about this trip. By overcoming the adversity at the start that would have done in a lesser horse, Are You Talking to Me stamped himself as a real pro. Of course, you should be familiar with runners who are habitual slow breakers. You cannot back with confidence any horse that has a history of becoming fractious in the barrier and leaving sluggishly. But if a horse breaks off balance or has the ground break from underneath him or gets wiped out by a lunging neighbor and still runs reasonably well after all that, you should jot him down on your horses to watch list. <laughs> Setting easy fractions while well clear of the pack. Easterners refer to this kind of horse as the lone speed. Westerners say the horse is the lone F, as in the lone front runner. But no matter what coast you're cheering from, you know that if your horse shakes loose early without any pressure, he's going to be hard to catch. Handicappers are always looking for the lone speed. A horse that enjoys a very soft pace figures to be strong for the stretch drive, in addition to the likelihood that the horse will enjoy a ground-saving trip and avoid any traffic trouble. No horse is more dangerous than a devout front runner who is handed an easy lead and has shown the ability to take advantage of it. Special rings